Hello everyone, I'm Hanan Elaiti from the Canadian University Dubai and your host for the show. Welcome to the Inspire Minds podcast. Today, we are delighted to share with you an accomplishment that we are very proud of. Canadian University of Dubai and Center for Entertainment Arts have signed a Memorandum of Understanding to train students and participants for careers in the exciting world of film, TV, and animation. In this podcast, we will walk you through how this partnership will be beneficial to interested participants and students. We will also dive deeper into the fascinating work of gaming and animation and see how this industry will shape tomorrow's world. I have with me today the co-founders and the co-CEOs of Center of Entertainment Arts. I can see in their eyes how eager they are to speak about this endeavor. Peter? Thank you, Hanan. It's really amazing to be here, and it's such an exciting uh, time for all of us uh, with this uh, partnership between uh, the CUD and the CEA. So my role is as the co-CEO and co-founder of the Center for Entertainment Arts, um, and I look after things like the academic quality, the curriculum. Hi, my name is Devankar Gandhi. I'm the other co-founder and co-CEO at the Center for Entertainment Arts. Uh, my role is primarily working with students. We ensure that students from around the world, talented students from around the world, find their way to the programs that we offer at CEA. Peter and I have been working on our dream to be in Dubai as, a, as an institution for, I would probably say, about six years or so right now. There's so much talent in the region that would love to be in, you know, in this industry, working in animation, visual effects, or game development. And uh, this is their opportunity to be part of that industry. And uh, what better way to do it than partner with CUD and And do it right here in Dubai. Absolutely. Where did this dream start? Tell me the story of your success. My background was in the entertainment industry. I worked for the longest time uh, on many big products. And what I found and what is well known throughout the industry is that there's a huge need for talent, a huge need for new people to enter the industry. Uh, there's not enough people out there. So what we wanted to do with the CEA is create world-class studio-style learning so that the moment they graduate, they start working. The they studios don't need to return. To the ground exactly, right? exactly, right? <laughs> so that was why the CEA was created. We wanted to create a world-class curriculum mm-hmm. that's updated constantly because the, the technology moves so fast, it's, it's going out of date that's quickly. That's true. Taught by industry professionals in a studio-style learning environment, um, recreating just like the environment they're going to work in later. It's been very, very effective. CEA has grown from having um, only one campus in Canada to now two, and of course now our new home in the Middle East here in Dubai. Um, it, it was also, again, you know, of course, student is is our success story. I mean, I think everything is centered around students primarily. That's our main objective. But when we think about Dubai or we thought about the MENA region in general, we also wanted to make sure that the stories that exist in this region are being told as well, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody focuses so much on Hollywood. And of course we do too, right? Mm -hmm. Because we have students who go and work in Hollywood studios, but we want to give an opportunity to the talent from here to tell their stories, whether it be in, you know, film, animation, through games. That is something that we really want to focus on as well. So there's an opportunity there and uh, we want to certainly extract that and show that to the world. I want to hear your um, insights and views about this MOU that has been signed. We were looking to start with shorter courses to begin with, micro-credentials, mm-hmm. uh, professional development credentials, um, so that uh, students can come in, get a taste for what's needed, mm-hmm. um, for, for what's needed to enter industry, uh, across a range of the subject areas that they like, uh, and then progress, if they wish, into further education uh, at our other campuses in Canada. Um, also, in, in the medium term, then launching longer courses here in, in Dubai. And then once all the approvals are done, the entire programs here in Dubai. So students will be able to have a choice. Do they want to do shorter, shorter programs, professional development, medium term, complete in Canada if they wish, or have the entire program here in the UAE? I probably would say we are the only institution that offers something, what we call the Student Work Initiative Program. Okay. What that does is students in our programs, our full-time programs, they're able to apply their learning that they have at the campus level to an actual studio, a major studio, 
in Vancouver, Calgary, or Montreal, or Toronto, wherever they can yeah. find that work through the campus. And they apply that learning there and get the best experience possible while studying. Mm-hmm. Of course, students get paid for that work as well. Yeah. But I think more importantly, the experience that they gather at the, at the experiential level at a studio yes. is amazing. So that's something that we will also bring to Dubai as well at CUD, where students will be able to find work while studying. You mentioned the micro-credentials are also something that they can take with them if they choose to continue their education in Canada. Um, are you also supporting placements in Canada? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the, uh, when the student starts in Canada, mm-hmm. uh, we have a, a, a teaching style that starts in a more instructor-led way. Mm-hmm. And as the student progresses through the program, it becomes more and more student-led. Okay. So as the student becomes specialized in different areas, they get to choose maybe they want to be an animator or a lighter or a rigger or a programmer or whatever it might be. As they get to the end of their time, uh, they start working on projects specifically in that area. Mm-hmm. And we bring in mentors to help the students from studios that are really specific in that area. Mm-hmm. And as they develop their portfolios, uh, our staff and these mentors and our entire team of industry experts helped to recommend these students into jobs. So our placement rate oh. is very, very high. I think we got to n- over 95% of the last graduated class were had job offers that were accepted before they graduated. That's a powerful number. Yeah. It is. It is. yeah. And it feels like it's a whole village mm-hmm. focus on one student. Exactly. Success. Yeah. The, uh, the people we work with, yeah. they work so hard and they make yeah. such amazing projects. And yeah. so many of them had such a difficult journey into the industry because there was nothing like CEA when they started. Now they give back and they get so much enjoyment out of helping the next group of students become That's the next yeah. creative makers. When you look at some of the major cities of Canada, Vancouver is an example. Yeah. 25 years ago, it was a city focused on natural resources, on um, blogging, on exports, tourism. Um, not hugely different from Dubai, which is very used to be a very natural resource and tourist based. And now it's the one of the centers of the world for technology and entertainment. And that happened because a small number of games and movies came to Vancouver and started to be created. And then they spawned other movies and they spawned other movies and other games and it became this massive, massive industry to, to now when uh, they together eclipse everything else combined in the city. Any movie that you can think of, right? Pick, whether it be Deadpool, Marvel series, the Game of Thrones, Mandalorian, they have been touched by Vancouver. So that's something that we have to understand because that's how much potential Vancouver there's probably over 40,000 artists who or technical artists who work in that industry today in Vancouver alone it is a very important piece of our economy and of course I think uh, this is where Dubai is heading as well the mandate is here to diversify economy in the creative arts industries and uh, this is there's no better time than now to do it Can you speak to the ratio between the technical Mm -hmm. learning and the creativity side of things? Yeah, absolutely. That's a really good question because Mm -hmm. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, two or three people could maybe make a game. Um, Fast forward to now, most game studios have 200, 300 people working on a single game. And each one of those is specialized into a certain role. Mm -hmm. So uh, no matter what your interest is, there's a place for you in this industry. If you're artistic, if you like design, if you like architecture, um, programming, uh, technical audio. Have you seen the someone who's super creative, not technical, learn the technical? Yes, I have. And, and actually, okay. my background um, uh, is also in software engineering. I used to be a very technical person. Yeah. And many people I taught came in um, thinking, I, I don't want to learn to program. I don't want to learn to code. Mm-hmm. It's not my thing. I'm an artist. I draw. And suddenly they found they had an affinity for it and they loved it. And they ended up becoming programmers and, and software engineers and then technical leaders um, okay. years later. And, and they think back to that time before they even thought about becoming a programmer, they had no ex- exposure to it. So, And vice versa too. I've seen oh, programmers become artists. Yeah. So um, one of the things that we do at CEA is expose um, students to all aspects of learning in the beginning and then they specialize later. So maybe they don't know what their hidden gem is that they're, that they're this is professional it. Line, but Discover we help them find it. Passions. Exactly. Yes. That's right. Yeah. We offer an excellent game development program. Mm-hmm. That's the one Peter is really talking about. Has several streams. I mean, you could go to be a game designer or you could be working as a programmer on several game engines. So that's something that we really inculcate from day one. We want students to explore and find their path. But again, at that same, having said that, 
we have a, as you said, a village around them mm-hmm. that supports them throughout that journey. That is, uh, I think it, this is a question that it's going to be in many of our students, potential students and potential participants head. Mm-hmm. Um, we do see either you're creative or either you're uh, technical, and this is great opportunity to bridge between the two. I would like to shift to five years ahead, mm-hmm. 10 years ahead, where do you see the industry at? I guess the biggest change is the, the, the synergy. It used to be game development was very, very different from making movies. Now, more of our game graduates get hired by movie studios than game companies because the technology used to make games is now being used to make uh, movies or TV shows like The Mandalorian. And, 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 and originally, the filmmakers didn't know about it. So there's this convergence. And I think that will be happening more and more. Uh, there'll be more and more convergence more and more uh, post-production, virtual production, um, which is what our, our visual effects program focuses on now. I really think about it. It's the platinum age of content. Mm. I mean, think about all the streaming services we have and look at all that content that's constantly out there. If you're an artist and you're a creative or technical artist, you know, this is your moment it to is. be able to explore that and to express yourself and be part of this industry. Um, As long as us humans, we require entertainment, Mm -hmm. this industry is not going away anywhere. So we are here. This is is a very viable career, uh, a long-term career for most people, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, if if you are that artist and you you have that dream to be part of this, Mm -hmm. please come and join CUD. That's a great segue to one question I honestly want to ask you is uh, stories. I'm sure you've been through, you've seen people transforming through the, these programs. Mm-hmm. Is there any story you want to share? So Welcome. many stories. I mean, <laughs> I have a very recent one right now. Um, who doesn't like Star Wars, right? I mean, Star Wars is that <laughs> thing that everybody just grew up with it. Even this generation. I mean, I'm, I'm talking, I'm a 40 year old man. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Star Wars was a big thing and it still is. But now we have these youngsters who are coming out and they, 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 they want to, uh, you know, participate in the next Star Wars series that's coming out. So we have a student right now who's uh, obviously watched all this growing up and what's his first job? He gets the Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. So he gets to work on the Mandalorian the day they graduate and uh, you know they, they get their credits being played right now everywhere and you've got a credit on a Mandalorian Star Wars show which is one of the biggest shows in the world right now. Um, can't get better than that for a student. I want to know what is the ratio between male and female in your programs? In most of our programs, it's exactly down the middle now, right, Walker? It's about 50-50. 50-50. And uh, there, sometimes there's even more women than men that come into mm-hmm. the programs. And it's great because we're now creating uh, amazing products that are uh, created by men and women equally. And uh, it's a very exciting place to work. So I would just like to say if there's any... Uh, women out there listening that are interested in getting into this sector is very welcoming. Uh, um, we need you and please come uh, and, and study with us everyone. at CUD. Yes, right. this mm-hmm. is a place. In terms of the education world, where are we? What are we shifting to? I think uh, in general education is, I really believe in our model. It's mm-hmm. the um, learn from people that do, Okay. right? It's a very technical, very skilled field. Mm-hmm. Learn from them. And that's what, how we teach. We bring in those experts. They do the knowledge transfer. and mm-hmm. um, Compared to someone that is very, very knowledgeable in theory on a certain topic, mm-hmm. but if they haven't created a movie, if they haven't created a game, they can't convey mm-hmm. exactly just, it's, it's such a crazy world to get into, and unless you've done it, it's hard to teach. But if you have, and that's what we want students to be exposed to, um, it, it, it's a different level of knowledge that's conveyed. So for me, I think in future, I, I hope to see more and more of the world move towards this um, yes. Applied learning, studio style learning, industry, professional learning. Do you work hard? I think you I'm not quite it? sure what more to add to that one. That was yeah. really good. <laughs> yes, it was good. <laughs> that, that is our model and, uh, and we truly stand by it. Yes. I, I think, again, it really comes down to that model is demonstrated with the success that students get. Mm-hmm. Students are getting jobs before they graduate. So we must be doing something right. <laughs> I think you are. (laughs) What I'm hearing, and we've been working together on to bring this to reality for uh, the Middle East, for Dubai, for the world, 
Um, what I feel and what I want to say to the listeners that with the micro credentials training that is one week long and it's in and out and you can see maybe there are some hints passions that we will discover and you will discover at the end of the day we are here to infuse the passion dedication and skills onto uae and the world thank you so much for joining me today thank you thank you very much really really do appreciate it my pleasure thanks